Could this be the Star Wars Millennium Falcon, a plug to an inner world, or a marine version of Stonehenge? An exploration team finds something fit for the X-Files during an expedition in the Baltic Sea. The team captured this sonar image of a circular object about 300 feet down on the sea floor. The Baltic Sea Anomaly. Is it really still an unsolved mystery? Are we looking at a crashed UFO? Or could it be an ancient construction from before the last ice age? Or is it just a simple rock? I'm Thomas Mikey Jensen, and I want to take you on a ride down the memory lane and review some of the most important ROV videos and pictures from the anomaly and the updates that Ocean X team brought us after it went on various worldwide news channels as CNN and Fox News. But let's start with the full length news clip from CNN that kicked it all off. For shipwrecked treasure hunters, it's a game of patience and persistence and being in the right spot at the right time. Deep down on the bottom of the Baltic Sea near Sweden, a team of salvage experts may have hit the jackpot. The trouble is, so far, this bounty can't be explained. Peter Lindbergh has been in the business for almost 20 years. This vintage champagne hauled from a century-old wreck, one of his sweetest successes. Until, that is, the commercial diver stumbled upon an incredible find. We had been out for nine days. And, uh, well, we were quite tired and uh, we were on our way home, but we, we uh, well, made a final run with the sonar fish. And uh, suddenly this thing turned up and, uh, well, my first reaction was uh, to tell the guys that, hey, we have a UFO here on the bottom. Sonar readings show it's about 60 metres across, all the size of a jumbo jet, and it's not on its own down there. The Ocean Explorer team also found another smaller disc-shaped object nearby. Both show a rigid tail or drag marks more than 400 metres long. Their size and distinctive shape are generating some peculiar theories. Could this be the Star Wars Millennium Falcon, a plug to an inner world, or marine version of Stonehenge. There has been uh, discussions about Russian uh, warships that were around that they built in the end of the 1800s, uh, but they are smaller, only about 30 meters across, and uh, they weren't in the Baltic as well. Uh, of course, it can be uh, something else from a ship or wreck, but uh, still, it's quite big. Yeah, you have the disturbance, it's from the waves. Mm. The head of archaeology at Sweden's Maritime Museums so says this type of imaging, called a side scan sonar, doesn't always reflect what's actually on the sea floor. Varying temperature and wave conditions can result in anomalies on the images. But the intriguing dimensions of this picture are capturing his attention. It's definitely something, at least. Um, I'm not sure that you will see very much when you go down. If it's, if it's a more natural geological formation, it might be that it's, it's hard to see. The sediments in the area are very loose. The side scan sonar tool sometimes uh, goes, goes down a little bit in soft sediments. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be interesting to see what it is. Andreas Olsen, who doesn't agree with treasure hunting and selling historical artefacts for profit, says the Baltic offers ideal conditions for preservation, with low salinity and no wood-boring organisms. It's helped protect many of Sweden's prized wrecks, including the 17th century warship Vasa. It was brought to the surface with its hull almost intact more than 50 years ago, and is now housed in its own museum in Stockholm. Right now, we know about approximately about 20,000 uh, objects, mostly shipwrecks, in the Baltic Sea, to a total. But uh, I think we have at least 100,000. Uh, there's a lot of areas we haven't really uh, seen anything, and many shipwrecks are also hidden under, under the seabed. So it's uh, for, for an archaeologist, I think the, the, the Baltic Sea is, is like a shipwreck laboratory. 
the best in the world. One glittering rival is the North Atlantic, where a top salvage company has struck gold, or silver to be exact, twice. Odyssey Marine recently found two wartime shipwrecks off the coast of Ireland. On board could be hundreds of tons of silver. The American team, just like the Swedish crew, are waiting for calmer waters beginning in May to see if their discoveries will be all that they imagined. Peter Lindbergh is even preparing a submarine for tourists and private investors for a closer look at what really lies beneath. Brooke Bowman, CNN, London. And that CNN news clip was from January 2012. Did Peter Lindbergh really say, hey, we have a UFO on the bottom? Yes, he did say that, because that was what they thought at first sight. Other team member were later quoted for saying it looks like a crashed UFO. But the big question is, is it a crashed UFO? Ocean X team went back again later in 2012, and this time the team brought back ROV videos and footage of the anomaly. These recordings are showing us the Baltic Sea anomaly seen from the remote operated vehicle, also known as said before the ROV. So is it just a normal rock? I don't think so because there is a lot of video recordings and pictures that clearly have shapes and holes that to me don't look like a normal natural creation. Just have a look at the pointed rock in this clip. Could it be an evidence of an ancient civilization? To me it looks like the marker stones that ancient Neolithic people have placed around on Dartmoor in England where I live. I have seen hundreds of shaved pointed rocks like this near all the old Neolithic settlements on the moor. So the question is, if this is a marker stone, who shaped it and put it there, where there has been water for almost 15,000 years now? And what about the 90 degree angle showing up on the blue view scan? Is that natural? Or constructed? Could this be an evidence of the use of ancient technology in our past? And what about the mysterious two meter wide hole with a square frame around it that they saw from the ROV on the Blue U scan? Is that natural or could it be constructed? Here is another hole in the anomaly. It's about 25 centimeters in diameter and they filmed it with the ROV. Some people have commented on it and said that they believe there is a flow of water coming out of the hole. My name is Stefan Ogeborn and I'm the diver uh, of Ocean X team. This is a picture of the hole in the object and we are very interested in taking a closer look at this. Here's another good example of square blocks. You see the 90 degree angle on the block on top right. Almost too good to be true. Not saying it's not natural. Here we have another really great example. Just look, see the lines. I am gonna screenshot this one, pause the video here. Look at those angles you got there. And it's not only the 90 degree angles you see, it's also the actual surface you're looking at that seems smooth. So not only do you have a 90 degree angle corner, you also have a smooth surface. Could this be something extraordinary we are looking at here? These are the recordings from the ROV from 2012. And these are to me, amazing recordings. But there is about five hours of ROV footage and we can't go through it all here, but I'm gonna leave you with a few minutes here so you can have a look at it for yourself and think about what is it that we are looking at down there. I don't know it, we don't know it, nobody know it, but let's 
follow the ROV for a few minutes. These are beautiful recordings from the Baltic Sea Anomaly. These were in 2012, but 2012 were also the year where Stefan Hokeborn, together with another diver, dived to the actual object and took some pictures of it. And those pictures have surfaced on social media a little while ago again. with a triangle on, imprinted on the side, with a hole in the middle of the triangle. And just a little meter next to that hole and triangle, there is another hole visible on one of the pictures. These have just surfaced now in 2022. So let's have a look at them also. What are we looking at? And here is one of the holes. This is just a tiny little hole and I would estimate it to be about 7 to 10 centimeters in the diameter. I have to add, when we are looking at this picture here, that the grey color you see is added. Because I want you to see what I see. And I see a kind of a frame around the hole. Now you have seen the hole with its grey color around it that I put on the picture to make it stand out. I think we need to look at the original raw image that Stefan Hogeborn took. And this is it. Can you see that hole? I can. In our search for the answers about the Baltic Sea Anomaly. Could this hole help us to find some answers to what it could be? And then again, in April 2022, Dennis Osberg came out with this video. Hi, Dennis Osberg here, Ocean X Team. I have today decided to go out with a picture, a new picture for you. But this picture we had already 2012 uh, and we have lots of pictures of the Baltic Sea Anomaly. But this picture I think is very interesting. So I want to show you this and you can also go into our webpage oceanxteam.com there will I also put up the original pictures. So. This is the Baltic Sea Anomaly. 
If we are looking for latest news about the Baltic Sea anomaly, this video from Dennis have to this day today, and we are counting May 2022, gonna be the latest news. But Dennis didn't say anything about the image. He didn't say anything about the triangle he saw. He didn't say anything about the hole in the triangle. He did point it out with some graphics, though, so we went into the Ocean Explorer Facebook group where I saw Dennis posted the pictures. On his post he wrote, the Baltic Sea anomaly, if you look at the picture you see a triangle with a hole, hard to see, therefore I have a picture with a red line as well, and you can see that the plate is covered with sediment as well. The picture was taken of the side of the object. What do you think? And that was Dennis Osberg's way of telling the public what he think about the anomaly, or that is what I think that Dennis is doing. Now these videos and new pictures were a little offspring of our time travel back to the beginning of the Baltic Sea anomaly. We gotta go back to 2012 again and view just a few more minutes of Stefan Horkeborn's dive to the Baltic Sea Anomaly together with his two co-divers. That was June 2012. And you can see Stefan taking the famous sample from the Baltic Sea Anomaly that was sent to the Weismann Institute to be tested. This is the original side scan sonar image from 2011. And one thing I find very strange is that we'll have this hard surface, but still we have a darker color. If it is a hard surface, it should have this white color all over it. But instead it looks like the bottom, which consists of clay and mud, which is very soft. The only hard surfaces we see is these thin lines which are the uh, corridors and angular, angular uh, structures we have on the object. So this is something I want to find out why it looks like this. This is a very, very interesting picture also. It's also a blue view picture. Here we use the ROV and we're looking down at the object. Here you can see straight lines. It's uh, in our eyes, not nature have done that. But perhaps it is. But in our case, we don't know. You can see the straight lines here, but you can also see a hole. It's two meters in diameter. It's have also a frame around it. It looks like a frame, but we don't know. 
But with a blue view picture, we see quite well. And as you can see here, you have a two meter diameter hole and the frame around it. And here we have straight lines going here. The whole object has straight lines here. So this is a very interesting picture we have. Now let's go to 2013 because 2013 was the year where everybody thought we we're gonna get some more answers. We knew the team were gonna go back. We knew they have issues getting funding to it. So when they finally got back, it was when they had a so-called mission to some of the other wrecks nearby that could fund their cost for the expedition. Time was limited and the money was low. The equipment wasn't the best, but the team tried the best they could to get some more answers. But before we continue with this update from 2013, I'll have to add, listen carefully to all the things that is going on out there, what Dennis is talking about in the video. From ghost images on the radar, to ROVs that won't work and constantly stop working. It's not always easy, but listen carefully when he gives you the update. Because now it begins, it's becoming strange. Strange things are happening. Now we are outside. We are um, near the second object in the Baltic Sea. And we're gonna send down the ROV to look at it for the first time. It's gonna be a magic moment. We are very interested to see what we have found down there. And this is, like I said, the first time we're gonna do that. Okay, so we have some kind of uh, things on the monitor now. We don't know what it is. We are the objects. Uh, it's on the surface. That's the strange thing. It can be everything, but have you any? Yeah, uh, film on the depth. The depth is depth. It's uh, almost off up on the surface. Uh, strange. Yeah. These things are turning up. Yeah. Have you seen anything like it, Flores? No. I have not. Very strange. Yeah, for sure. This is strange. We are at the object uh, just uh, 150 meters from it and we are on our way to the object and this thing is coming up on the screen now that's not that is strange okay
20th, on our way back, what are your thoughts on this uh, surgeon? We're on our way home now. We have been out for 10 days. And the main purpose of this uh, journey was to look at a couple of wrecks. Uh, what can I say about that? It's not like we have hoped. Uh, we know things we did not know before. That's the good part. We know things we did not know before about the wrecks. And this is where we are ending the live stream slowly. And this is where we are ending the live stream. But you can watch the full video in November 2022, where it will be available on Knowledge Portal TV, and you will be able to find it on YouTube, Spacelink TV on YouTube. But follow Spacelink page on Facebook, and you can get much more information about the Baltic Sea Anomaly. That was the first 30 minutes of one hour and 47 minutes so far in the software, ready to process and stream November 2022. Stay tuned guys, because this is a mystery, we want to solve it, but how can we do it? The Baltic Sea Anomaly, the never-ending mystery. Thank you for watching so far. Until we see you again, take care. Bye.